G'day everyone, welcome to Hook, Line and Sink here and I love an early morning and I that's love, exactly what we've got here. I love Andrew, the smell of Adelaide in the morning yes. and that's where we are today folks, a very, very action packed show lined up. Metro fishing out of Adelaide, yep. first on the agenda, snapper, yep. second whiting, we're about to get about run to over. About to get run that's over, all it's, right. oh, it's getting busy here at the Adelaide boat ramp, they're all keen to get into the whiting. We've got the bar crusher lined up. It's a tough whiting rig. I like this boat too. This is uh, less tough. Uh, let's go fishing. Nice rig. We're not saying that we're going to catch big fish. As is. Whoa! There's one of a jump here, have a swim. You're a twit. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm on a dam! Point well made, although you didn't make it that well. I love it. I love it. I think we bog. That's, That's not, not different. different. It's exciting. Well, yes, we are fishing. We have driven an inordinate uh, distance out here to what appears to be exactly the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Now, the man who's given us this direction is none other than Wilson Rep here in Adelaide, Paul Kanafa. Mate, welcome to the show. Thank you. Paint us a picture of today's proceedings. And first of all, why are we here? Um, hopefully to catch a snapper in the middle of the Gulf, mate. This is the Gulf. Middle of the Gulf. I love it here, but there's a little rock, a little bommy. There's something down there, a bit of a reef. Yeah. Reefy structure. Um, and it's the only reef anywhere in the Gulf, is that right? <laughs> no, not quite, but uh, yeah, there seem to be a few fish around on the, on the sand, so. Um, All right, so we're trying for a snapper here. I think I've lost my bait. And then uh, if we can, yeah, hope you got plenty. And then if we can organise that, maybe a whiting a little bit later in the day, is that what we're doing? Hopefully, that, that's the plan, yeah. Right. Well, uh, you know, look like a responsible individual. Oh! Have you got him? No. Come on. I thought you said Australians tapped, knew what you were tapped. doing. All right, we've got our first fish on now. We're just having a bit of... It's a slow start. There's fish on the sound. We're getting plenty of bites, but we're wasting our bait because... Pickers. The, yes, pickers. 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 So uh, we dropped down a smaller rod yeah. with a bit of cockle on it. Cockle. I love using cockle in South Australia. Yeah, it's a very, very popular bait, cockle. And we've got a what have we got? fish on. Not one of the big snapper that we're hoping for, but I'd say it's a snapper. In fact, oh, I'd say it's two snapper. Two little snapper. Not size, Good but fish. little. That'd Good be fish. what the pickers are. Pickers. Pickers. Yeah. We so need something bigger than that. We'll get something bigger than that. Don't 30 k's and catch that. No. No, no. Paul, something bigger than that. Get to work, son. Yes, mate. Now you can see the end of my rod tip bouncing away there, and this is, you might be thinking, oh, 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 strike, 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 give a bite. What it is, in fact, is these pickers. The pickers know that, uh, or the small snapper know that this is the only reef in a sort of 100 square mile radius, and so they are here and they're sitting right on top of it, and we're having a lot of trouble getting a bait down through them. I've just chucked out an enormous piece of squid in the sort of vain hope that, in fact, I think my big bit of squid's gone now because the pickers have stopped. The vain hope that it would hang on long enough for a, uh, a big fish to maybe boss the little fish out of the way and come and pick it up, but I don't know. I think probably what we need to do is maybe... <laughs> what are you doing? So I think probably what we need to do is uh, maybe get out a little bit away from the pinnacle, from the reef structure, and maybe just drift those outer edges and hope that a bigger fish is hanging out there. Now, as I catch another Adelaide snapper yep. from the heart of Adelaide, yes. there's some interesting things about Adelaide, Nick. 
Yes, indeed, Andrew. Uh, one of the things we're doing on the program today is just having a look at uh, cultural points of interest. Items, cultural significance! So when you're talking of significantly cultural places for South Australians, this is yes. it. This is the, the cultural heartland. Yes. It's quite extraordinary. Explain why. It's a must. So, you know, like Sydney's got the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge. Melbourne's got the Westgate Bridge. Amazing engineering feats they yep. are. Adelaide has Jeps Cross. Jeps Cross is five roads converging yes. into one place. Now, this is true. This is without a word of a lie. A South Australian told us that Jeps Cross is the busiest intersection in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> Look at it. It's extraordinary. It, it's easy to be overwhelmed by what you see here. It's not Jeps just Cross. the busiest intersection in Adelaide. Or South Australia. Uh, or Australia in the southern hemisphere look at it unbelievable cars backed up there for 30 meters <laughs> look at all these cars here so busy look right, you can go to barossa valley up that road perth up that road melbourne down that road don't know where that one takes you adelaide adelaide probably Yes. Oh, Hardy. Yes. Now, there, just over there, is Adelaide. We've come back in after what could only be described as a long journey. It was a long journey. It's, um, it's pretty shallow, this gulf, and it uh, does chop up. Uh, so bear that in mind if you're heading 30 k's out. But yes, we've come into uh, Ooh, now. Paul's very, very secret special marks that he stole from someone. Oh no. Oh no, what have you caught there? Two little tiny snapper. We're whiting fishing by the way. Yeah. King George whiting. It's not what these are. No, but these are small good fish snapper. nonetheless. Oh, wonderful fish. Wonderful fishery. Sign of a healthy fishery to have small fish like this around the place. <laughs> Adelaide, yep. Now, this well, you're is on again, Hardy. felt a little bit different to the smaller um, snapper bites. Yeah. Well, we're getting it, just sort of hit it straight away, and yes. Oh, yes, here we right. go. This is what Adelaide is famous for. Jeps Cross, and this. Paul, come down here. Yes, mate. Immediately, Paul. Down here, sir, to the back of the boat, sir. Now, tell us about this little fish called the King George Whiting. A delectable table fish. Yes. That's the thing, isn't it? They Sweet. are just delicious. Delicious. People from flesh. other states, except maybe Victoria, maybe wonder why why we go on so much about King George Whiting. But that's the only reason, because they are just so delish. Delicious. Very firm flesh. Yep. And just very sweet on the on the plate. And that's him. Well, we we'll let him go. We, we don't want to. We're not about catching a feed today, are we, mate? No. You didn't bring an esky so as you could take home a feed, did you? No, no, no. No, we'll just put him back this time. What are you doing? <laughs> well, we're we're into catch and release. Oh, you can't. No, we're not. <laughs> oh, got one. Maybe. Oh. What do you mean? Another whiting. Getting towed up in the Just whiting department. Whiting. Come on, come on, come on. I haven't caught one yet. Hasn't been my day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yes. Better fish, better fish, better fish. Oh, better fish. Big whiting, this one. This is the fish of the day, I would say. Oh yes, good fish, good fish, good fish. How do you rate the uh, whiting as a sport fish, Andrew? Well, if this is a whiting, Nick, I'd rate them very well. Dear, oh me, this thing's telling me up. Colour down there now. Oh, it's two fish. No, it's one, it's a decent snapper on four pound braid. That's pretty good fun. Nice stuff. Nice stuff to me. Well done, Andrew. Congratulations, Andrew. How are you going, Nick? 
Yeah. Snapper and whining are the mainstays of Adelaide's wreck fishing scene and there are plenty of both for anglers who know where to go. Yep, structure is the key. Find the reef and you've found the fish. Fresh bait and burley will also boost your chances of a succulent feed of Phillips. Well, I've got a fish. I'm in the game. I don't know. I don't know whether it's a snapper or a whiting. It could be a whiting and if it's a whiting that would mean the end of this whiting segment and that would be a blessed relief for you at home. Is it? No. Yes! Yes, yes, the whiting, probably just under size, doesn't matter. Adelaide whiting, folks, and snapper. Thanks, Paul. Right, it's mate. been a real pleasure to have you on board the uh, bar crusher today. Thank you. Can't say the same for you, Andrew. Folks, we'll have more of hook, line and sinker after the break. Thank heavens you caught one. We've been out here nine that. What a trophy hours waiting fish. for him to catch that fish. Trophy, We've kidney slapper, see? 18 each. Slap me in the kidney. Kidney slapper, huge fish. You're an idiot. Yeah, that's fair. The Deep End. Brought to you by the University of Tasmania. After a day's boating on the water, you might wonder, how did this boat design ever get built? My back aches. Today we're going to see how boats get tested, both for engine performance and for safety considerations. In terms of commercial consulting, we believe model testing is like an insurance policy. Um, a computer prediction will give you good relative comparison between different models. Model tests will still give you the absolute prediction, so it will give you a much, I believe it will give you a much more accurate um, set of results. We had a, a postgraduate student working here as a direct result of the Sydney to Hobart, I think it was the 1998, where there was a number of fatalities and the students, I believe the students' purpose was to look at yacht capsizing and yacht rewriting and to look at the effect of, of uh, capsize with and without the rigging to see if that would affect the rewriting capabilities and also to test a number of different designs to try and improve the rewriting of yachts. To hook, line and sinker everybody. This is Chris Hurt from Lua One Fishing Charters, mate. Welcome to the big show. How are you? Very, very, very well. Now, the rest of Darwin, this is Darwin just behind us. The rest of Darwin is currently asleep. But we are not, mate. We're out here on the water before sun up. Just take us through what we're doing. We're going to try and build up a milkfish and milk catch it. Milkfish, you've got to tie a knot better than that, hopefully. Mate, that, was, uh, that was for you when you can hook the fish, you lose it. Ah, good, good, excellent. Mm. Started already. Milk fish. Now we're, we're fishing near a fish feeding place for the tourists. Are we poaching these fish? Not, no, we're outside the signs. We're, we're legal. We're poaching these fish, fish, folks. We're poaching the milk fish, an extraordinary species of fish. And Darwin is one of the only spots you can catch them. Should be very, very good. Spent the last half an hour, or Chris has spent the last half an hour tossing bread into the water here. Now, we've just seen our first sort of big slashing runs from the milk fish. Now, Chris, milk fish are not a good fish to eat, are they? No, they're fairly unpleasant. Bl bland and full of bones, yeah. yeah but so, there is one reason that we catch the milk fish, and that is. The fight. They go like stink. Yeah, they're good fighters. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Milk fish! The milk fish is on! He's eating the bread, but he doesn't know he's hooked. Oh, well, here he is down here. Is this the end of the fight? That's it. That's it. Gee, they're good fish. They're they are a good fish. He's not going to go at all. Now, those things uh, well, know, to where the, <coughs> know where the structure is. And we've got rocks in the water. There's an old fence in the water. There's a rock sort of wall out here and generally you hook them and they head straight forward. Yeah. Chris yeah, has got them trained. fish is across the top of the water. All right, he's coming up. 
Oh. Well, there's more milkies down the Yeah, trail. they go well. The milky goes well. Good grief. Well, there's milkies everywhere down the back now. Outstanding. Right and the milky is also a, um, a pretty good proposition on your fly rod. Excellent fish on fly. Whoa. Oh! Might damage the line and the anchor rope before when you cut that. May have done that. May have. Right. Blown away by milky. Disappointing. <laughs> a fish. A fish. Righto folks, you've seen the show, you've thought, alright, I'm going to get fishing a go. So you've gone out, you've bought all the gear, you've bought the hooks, the sinkers, the swivels. Now you need somewhere to keep them. And Anthony Pablo from Wilson Tackle, mate, you've got the solution. We do. We've uh, introduced this year some new tackle boxes in the junior series that you're holding there and yep. the senior. Now, just tell us about them. They're the shore catch range of tackle boxes. They are. Shore catch have done a lot of development in their uh, design and come up with some very practical tackle boxes. Now, these trays, the junior has the two trays, the senior the three, and they're adjustable compartments, is that right? Lots of room, lots of storage area, and very durable. Now, the lid, tell us about the lid. That's a new feature in tackle boxes. The lid is a little different. Whilst travelling, it helps keep the top tray in place. So you don't have a messy surprise when you open your tackle box. Now, they're also strong. Demonstrate for us how strong they are. They are strong. Pop up on that. There Look you at go. that. You're short. Short catch tackle boxes, folks. Check them out. All right, now, to catch a milkfish on the fly has long been, uh, well, on my to-do list. Something to do, you know? You, you read about it in all the magazines. These fish are super powerful, super hard fighting, and catching them on the fly is, you know, the ultimate challenge. This is a bread fly that you've tied up, mate. Uh, what is it? Just a bit of... Acrylic wool. Acrylic wool. Yeah. We've got a few milkies in the trail, so you just throw it at them. Yeah. Watch them eat it. Yeah. And hold on. Hang on, man. Oh, yeah. This is good. This is great. I mean, Darwin is just there. Darwin is, you know, 50 metres away. Well, that, I mean, that's a tree. That's not Darwin, but you get the idea. Yeah! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got one on. <laughs> Heading for the rocks. You try and get him out of there. Oh dear. You better try and get him out of there, Hardy. Uh, yeah. You better get him out of there, mate. Yeah. Oh dear. What, um, what's oh, going to be your tactic here? Oh my goodness. <coughs> right. <laughs> Goodness me. There's nothing you can do here. No, you're There's a, a lot of sharp rocks and whatever else out there. Oh, wine now. Oh dear. Oh goodness. Oh my goodness. Chris was saying he uses old fly lines on uh, milkfish fly tackle because it's not uncommon to lose one. Oh no. Oh goodness. It's just not even looking like burning that fish. Oh, burning my hands. Oh, fly reels are good too because it's one to one. Yeah, yeah just perfect. One to one. Oh my goodness. This fish is out there. Way out there. Come back here, boy. It's going to be nice to him. Come on, boy. Oh, this is good. Oh, gracious. Chris was saying the biggest one caught yeah. is about 15 kilos caught by a pommy backpacker. Yep. Who'd never really caught a fish. Pommy backpacker in Darwin? <laughs> it wouldn't seems extraordinary, is not it? Who's never really caught a fish. And he hooked one <laughs> on the fly and it was 15 kilos, was it? Yeah, around about that, yeah. And how long did it take him to get it in? Over three hours. <laughs> <laughs> three hours on a, on a fish that is related to a mullet. Can you believe we're even doing this? Mullet fishing. Oh, it's sensational. You are winning. 
when people come to Darwin, you know, all they want to do is catch a barra and uh, you know, Saratoga, but Barra's the main one. And there's just so much more to the Northern Territory than Barramundi. I'm not saying Barramundi are bad, but there is just so many other options. And this one's not a bad one. If you've got half a day in Darwin, just give Chris a call. And out you come, and I mean, this is uh, this is first class sport fishing. At no stage in this fight have I been in control, but I'm beginning to feel a little bit confident here. We might be able to grab him here. We might be able to grab him here. Yeah! Yes. Be well quick. done. You've got to be quick with him or you'll die easily. Right, yeah. we'll just get him you wet your hands first. Camera. Hang on tight, don't drop him. Don't touch his eye. Don't touch his eye, don't drop him. Goodness me. That is sensational. That is a milkfish. We have to get him back in the water, otherwise he'll die. A pet Darwin Harbour milkfish poached. It's near the fish feeding area. Turn around, Hardy, quick ones. Oh. Oh, and away he goes. How about that? Oh, mate, that's sensational. <laughs> that How is fantastic. About Ticked that. Ticked off the to-do list. I've no desire to do it again. <laughs> that's not too hard. There's only 12 minutes. Eh? Hey? There's only 12, 12 minutes. minutes. 12 minutes. Imagine yeah. being hooked up for three hours. Milkfish make just about everything else that swims look a little sluggish. Just remember, you must stay outside the fishing exclusion zone to avoid a massive fine. Chris Hurt runs Lure One Charters, specialising in Darwin Harbour sport fishing. Call him on 0437 321 227. And remember, the Tourism NT website is a one-stop shop for planning your top-end adventure. That's tourismnt.com.au. There you go, folks. Give Chris a call. You won't regret it. Uh, mate, Darwin Harbour, people drive hundreds of kilometres away to find fish but there's fish here on the doorstep of Darwin. That's exactly right. When you plan your territory adventure, make sure you put mm. this on the itinerary because it'll blow you away, quite frankly. That's the end of the show for this week. Hopefully we'll see you all again same time next week. Hawk, line and sinker goes to sea in the mighty Bar Crusher 640C. Bar Crusher, smooth, tough, plate aluminium boats. Power comes by the way of the awesome Yamaha F200 four-stroke. Yamaha, make it the heart of your boat. And when we fish, it's with quality Wilson Tackle. Since 1946, Wilson, the Australian tackle company. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.fishnet.com.au.